Riding a motorcycle is one of the most freedom, fun-filled experiences. So today, I'm gonna be riding a track-ready super sport motorcycle across the country for 30 hours straight through the snowy mountains and the insanely hot desert. This is a Yamaha R7, a super sport bike made for track race days, not 30 hour long rides. They have completely different types of motorcycles for very long endurance rides, but I wanted this one. This video is not about being practical or intelligent. It's about looking cool. And this is gonna be an extreme endurance challenge on a scale that's never been seen before. <laughs> For this story to make sense, I need you to understand why I'm doing this to begin with. When I was 18, I decided not to go to college, but I didn't want to become a no-name loser with absolutely no future, so I decided to make a vision board for myself. And in that vision board, I included this motorcycle. And now that I'm older, I had the perfect opportunity to get this one. I'm blown away right now. I just looked at my vision board. <laughs> I put this motorcycle on my vision board years ago. There's no words. If you, just if you want to live a better life, make a vision board. This is... There's no words to describe what I'm feeling because this is just nuts. You get the point. This is a big deal for me. It's not the exact same bike. It's actually better. Let me explain. First of all, it's not gonna kill me when I'm out riding in the street. This motorcycle is tuned to be a bit more street friendly, which will make it a lot more fun for everyday use and that's actually what I'm looking for. I'm not gonna take this on the track. I don't care. I just wanna look cool while I'm riding around in traffic. <laughs> the second reason this one is better is because of my current skill level of riding motorcycles. This one better suits me and the other one is more of a professional level bike. And the third reason this one is better, I can use this one pretty much every day and in the future, I can get a second motorcycle, which will be the upgraded, righted out, older brother of that one. And that is my ideal dream setup. So when I found out that I could ride this motorcycle, which was even better than what I was originally going for, it was an absolute no brainer. I said, I'm gonna get this thing no matter what, because this is the perfect opportunity to check off one of the items on my bucket list of all the cool things Christopher's gonna do. Also, Living in a world where it feels like masculinity is getting constantly attacked. Something about riding a motorcycle just ah, makes me feel connected to the part of myself that it feels like society wants to take away. Okay, with all the sappy stuff out of the way, now let's talk logistics here. Because I still haven't answered your question of why I'm gonna ride this thing for 30 hours. It's quite simple. Let's do some math in miles. This is problem number one. This motorcycle is selling like hotcakes. It's selling faster than plan B on a Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> the R7 and regular team Yamaha Blue, also known as the lame color, is already hard to find. And this white color is practically impossible. In fact, when I was talking to the rep at the place I'm about to mention, he told me he'd only ever seen one in that color ever. After hours of extensive research, I found a dealership in Seattle, Washington, actually north of there. They were gonna get one shipped into them in about three weeks. So I said, screw it, and I gave them a down payment, and I was gonna wait no matter how long it took to get this specific color. And that leads us to our next problem. I need to get the bike from Seattle, Washington down to Phoenix, Arizona, my new home state, which leaves me with only two options. One, I need to go up there anyway to sign the paperwork and just buy the thing, right? which I guess maybe could be done electronically, but that's lame. Which gives me the other option of having it shipped to Phoenix or riding that baby down through <laughs> with the wind bustling through my hair. <laughs> and because I am so incredibly cool and excited to ride this thing, ride it like I've never ridden anything before. <laughs> I decided there was no second option, or first option. There was no first option. I'm gonna ride this baby down. I'm gonna ride this baby down into the ground. <clears throat> Which leads us into our game plan. Stage number one, go and get the motorcycle. Stage number two, ride this thing down to Portland, Oregon, so I can show my family and freak out my mother. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? Once we arrive in Portland, Oregon, we're gonna do a straight shot down to Phoenix, Arizona. That ride is at a literal 21 hours long, and if you've ever done a long road trip before, 
you know that when the GPS says 21 hours, it's not. It's gonna take way longer than that. You gotta stop for food, gas, you gotta pee, you gotta do it all. <laughs> Additionally, the other main reason for driving it down first is because it's a three hour drive from Seattle to Portland and that's gonna give me three hours to get comfortable with the bike before I ride it for an extra 24 hours on top of that. So it's kind of like a little bit of a safety valve. We're gonna work out the kinks. The first leg of the journey should be pretty simple. The only issues I might run into is the fact that I haven't ridden a motorcycle in about, I don't know, seven years or something. And I need to remember how to do it <laughs> so that I don't die. Objective number one of this mission is probably not to die. So we're gonna put that up there. And on the second leg of the journey, we have a separate set of issues. First of all, it's just a man, a motorcycle, and his trusty backpack. <laughs> I'm gonna Dora Explora <laughs> this ride and put all of my essentials in there, including my map. I'm gonna have to pack to ride through the frozen mountains. I have a long sleeve shirt for when it's cold and I'm going through the mountains. Through the excessively hot desert. Probably really, really, really stupid in a tank top for when it gets hot and I'm driving through the excessive heat morning and everything else in between. A regular shirt for probably most of the ride. Before we begin stage one of going to get this motorcycle up in Seattle, Washington, I'm gonna run you through my fears list. Besides having no fears, here's fear number one. Crashing the motorcycle. In preparation for that, <laughs> one, I'm getting a helmet. <laughs> That's important. It's fine. <laughs> This is my high school ex-girlfriend crying while I'm buying a helmet because she thinks I'm going to die. Oh man, you get serious. I do. I don't want to I don't want to touch the damn thing. <laughs> what a baby. Two, I'm watching videos on motorcycle crashes specifically to make sure I don't do the things that they did. Oh my gosh. Oh wow, okay. I low-key I'm rethinking this a little bit right now. I mean watching a compilation probably doesn't help with the confidence of it. Fear number three. I don't think I am scared of anything. <laughs> Fear number three, losing my hearing. It's gonna be very loud in there for very long. All right, earplugs so I don't go deaf. I am prepared now with earplugs. Fear number four, not knowing which way to go on this 1200 mile trek because I won't have the directions in front of me. I'm gonna be raw dogging this like it's 1998 or something before GPS came out. <laughs> in the spirit of Lewis and Clark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Oregon Trail this bit. I am bringing battery packs so I can use my phone's GPS. <laughs> Why am I gonna do it in a straight shot for 24 hours? First of all, I just wanna see if I can do it. Built different, I just wanna see if I can do it. Seems fun. And second of all, I have a hot date with a very beautiful woman when I get back. And she wants to ride me, I, I mean the motorcycle. <laughs> And if I don't make it back in time, she's not gonna ride the motorcycle. <laughs> she's only gonna ride me. I'm just gonna tell you the rest of the problems as we go along because pretty much everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. So it was just Murphy's Law just saying, take it, Chris. Okay, time for stage one. Let's move into it. Now that I'm all packed up, it's time to go. I'm flying into Seattle, meeting my ex-girlfriend at her place, and then my cousin dropped me off at the dealership, which is when everything went absolutely sideways. I have no car. I'm halfway across the country. <laughs> I'm stranded. <laughs> I'm stranded in the middle of the Northwest. We're not even close to Seattle. My bank messed up. They didn't give us the check. I didn't know I was supposed to walk in with a check because I asked her, am I all good to go in the dealership and walk out with it? And she said, yeah. There's no money. <laughs> There's no money anywhere. <laughs> Sorry, I know we're eating like kings and queens out here. But... <laughs> After spending literally all day at the dealership, in absolute mayhem, I was finally able to walk out with it. Fine, we, had, we ran into a mess today. He figured it out as quickly we're as here. possible. We're here, Chris got it handled. Oh yeah. Right on, Sweet, brother. Sweet, dude. Hey. Thank you so much, brother. Congratulations. Thank you, appreciate right on, it. Man. And with that, I took off on my first three-hour drive down to Portland, Oregon. And I, I didn't record any of it because I was trying not to die. That's, that was objective number one, don't die. But here's the lowdown, okay? I did get my mom's reaction. I, I may have lied to them and told them that I was getting a car. Hello, Ma. Hi. Uh, is this your new car? Yeah. <laughs> You got to be kidding me. <laughs> no. Right? Really? 
<laughs> yes. Wow, are you kidding me, son? Wow. No, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, no, I see that. You went all the way who knows where for it. Really? Oh yeah. my gosh, son. Wow. Then my stepdad came out. The animal. Look at his new car. <laughs> Give it to me. You're killing me here. <laughs> what the hell you think you're doing here? Are you freaking kidding me? That's not a car. You know what, Mom? I actually think you're going to like this. No, I don't. <laughs> I got there at nighttime, and after I freaked out my mother, I had some time to reflect on my ride. My butt hurt so bad from sitting in that seat for three hours. The pain was so bad, I couldn't walk. <laughs> I, I needed a wheelchair. Somebody needed to get me a wheelchair after that ride. That seat felt like a pile of bricks. Not only that, you're like leaned over in this position the whole time. Three hours of that. But now it's time for stage three. Oh yeah, it is sunrise. I'm having a banana. Just time to head out. Bike is warmed up. Sun is barely coming out. Let the 24 hour ride begin. Wish me luck. This ride is 1,256 miles. And I haven't ran into this problem yet, but I'm gonna be driving through an excessive heat warning in Phoenix, Arizona that just set its record for most consecutive days over 110 degrees. I felt like I was gonna die of hypothermia on this freezing portion of the Mount Hood mountain pass. So I just drove by as fast as I possibly could into a warmer area. We made it to McDonald's. I passed over the mountain and I was so cold. I, I swear to God, I was, I was getting frostbite. It was so cold up there. There was still snow up on the mountain. I was getting the shivers the whole time. I'm still cold right now. It's been two hours since I passed it. I was so cold. I didn't even stop to vlog because I just needed to get out of there. Now I'm in a warmer part of town, Prineville. I'm trying to stop for gas every chance that I get. Because there's probably like, I can probably put like 200 like miles per tank, but I don't even want to get close to that because the last thing I want to do is be straight on a motorcycle. Last thing, my butt bones and my butt cheeks just, oh my God, just in actual literal pain because they're just stinging from the pain. I took off on my next 136 mile stretch to Burns, Oregon. It was pretty nice and calm and I definitely was not trying to hit the top speed at any point, including here. There is literally no possible way for me to know that you can go at least 125 miles an hour on this thing. All right, quick update. I'm in Burns, Oregon right now. Just a random place. I, uh, I snagged some subway. Now it's just time to keep on riding towards Nevada. Next stop is two hours away. Here's what I'm realizing. My butt is starting to hurt so bad. Another problem I'm running into is the route that I took, the gas stations are so far away. My tank goes 200 miles and the gas stations are like 150 miles apart. So it makes me feel like I'm on the edge the whole time. Honestly, just my legs. My, my butt is starting to hurt so bad. The biggest problem that I'm running into right now that I wasn't expecting is how bad my knees and ankles are hurting from being folded up like this. I'm starting to like stand up while I ride to try to get blood flow in there because other than that, it just keeps on hurting. So it feels like the most fun and freeing thing I've ever done, but we're only like a third of the way through and the pain is starting to set in. So I took off for the next leg of my journey. I just pulled over. Oh, I had to pull over. Oh no, ow, oh. oh. I ran into a bee with my chest. It went down my neck, into my chest, and then stung me. Oh, <laughs> what are the odds? It took like a week and a half for this bee sting to heal. I want to say it was a wasp because it didn't look black and yellow. It was like just black. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, my chest is burning right up. Oh, that hurts. Fuck. See, that was a lot more painful than I thought it would be. I didn't know it at that time, but running into the bee was just a warning. As I just took off on the hardest part of the ride yet. It started off fine when I made a group of motorcycle friends and we decided to ride together. Okay, let me explain the situation with my little buddies here real quick. <laughs> When I took off from Burns, Oregon, this is actually the furthest distance I have to drive before getting to a next gas station. Taking off from Burns, there's literally nothing. 
After about 15 miles, there was a sign on the side of the road that said no gas station or services for the next 120 miles. So I know that this is gonna be the longest leg of my journey and I can't mess this one up or I'm screwed. But I made my friends and they were riding so much faster than I was. It's a problem because I'm going too fast. I'm using so much more gas than I should be. We rode together for about an hour and that's when I realized I messed up. Their motorcycles have way bigger gas tanks than mine, which means that they weren't running out of fuel anytime soon. They eventually took a different exit to go to like Boise, Idaho or something, and I was left on my own. By keeping up with them, I used way more fuel than I should have. A super sport motorcycle is not made to go cross country. So I'm at the halfway point. I can't turn forwards or backwards. The gas stations are equally as far apart and I'm gonna run out of gas if I don't change up what I'm doing. So I slowed down to a comfortable 69 miles an hour, but that was still too fast. I'm too high in the rev range. With half an hour left, I'm on the very last bar. And I thought, I might be screwed here. So I adjusted my game plan again. With 20 miles left, my gas light turned on to tell me that I'm on the reserve tank now. So I slowed down to the most fuel efficient setting possible, which means I'm going like 30, 40 miles an hour in the shoulder of the freeway. I knew I was in trouble because I was seeing other cars pull over that couldn't make the distance. With only 10 miles left to the next gas station, I'm not sure how big this reserve tank is. This motorcycle could die at any moment. If it were to stop right now, I'm still 10 miles away from the gas station, which would leave me with only a couple of options. I could call for help. And the problem with calling for help is one, it's gonna take hours because we're in the middle of nowhere. I'm gonna be sitting on the side of the road with no food, no water, and I'm gonna use all of my cell phone battery waiting for somebody. I'm realizing at this point, I'm not Lewis and Clark. I don't know how to use the stars to navigate my way to my home. My other option is to run to go get gas myself and then run another 10 miles back to try to put more gas in the tank of this motorcycle to make it to the next gas station. That would also take all day. Or we get to the third impossible option, which is to stay on the motorcycle and roll it with no gas for 10 miles. The thing weighs over 400 pounds. I ain't doing that. Not on the side of the freeway. So my only option is to go as slow as I possibly can on this freeway and pray and hope that I have enough gas in this reserve tank to make it all the way there. I was going so slow, the semi trucks were passing me. I rode with the most anxiety. My heart sank to my stomach. I rode with the weight of the world on my mind for 20 minutes on the shoulder of the freeway until I got my glimmer of hope in the form of this beautiful sign that said gas one mile ahead. Somehow I was able to clutch it out and ride 10 miles on the reserve tank and hardly make it back where I needed to be. There's bugs all over the helmet, all over the bike, literally all over my arms. When I hit that B a while ago, I thought, you know, I was like, oh man, what are the odds of that? Little did I know, I was driving into a minefield, just bugs everywhere, so many bugs. Oh, and they, they hurt like little like little BB gun pellets. They just, the little pellets kept hitting me. Pop, pop, pop. I kept smacking them. I, I hit like 40 butterflies. They all hurt. I was like getting slapped all over the place. Just constantly. It was terrible. Oh my God. They hurt so bad. I was using way too much gas. And that got me in trouble. I almost didn't make it. That was such a close call. Lesson learned. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay, so I've officially made it into McDermott, Nevada. Now my next big goal is to make it all the way down to Las Vegas. That's like an eight hour ride. I'm going from the top of Nevada all the way down to the bottom, but we're gonna take some infant strides and drive all the way to Winnemucca, something like it. I officially arrived in Nevada and I'm still alive. I have 74 miles until the next gas station, so hopefully I won't die this time. God, it's just so beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. So I took off on the next leg of my journey. This one, I'm so glad I did not die on. I'm actually getting to enjoy the scenery for once and it feels like just one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. Just filled up on some gas right here. Literally $6, this is so cheap. Let me get a couple things before I head off again. Also, it's dinner time. Now that I'm 11 and a half hours in, the dog is getting hungry again. I only had that nanner this morning, so it's time to get some food inside of me. I'm gonna start stocking up on caffeine because I know it's gonna be a late, late night. 
this is gonna be our next problem. Battery life, my watch is at 14%. And I've been riding around looking at it, using it to look at directions. So I'm just gonna have to raw dog directions from here on out. Like people did in the old days also. Wow. Man, riding a motorcycle this long, do you have a tan line on my face? It's like a lot of work. I need to take a shower the second I go home. Now, we have some Taco Bell, so heck yeah. I was definitely one happy boy eating this Taco Bell, but I'm trying to stuff my face with as much food as possible so I can go like as long as I can without having to stop to eat because this is just eating up so much of my time. Not the extra eating pun. There's so much wind in the helmet that it's literally chapping my lips so hard. I don't know if you can even see it. Oh yeah, you can kind of see how it's starting to get burned right right here. Well, I need to apply so much loop balm. <laughs> Over applied. I was literally frozen shivering this morning and now we're driving into Phoenix. It just broke its record for most days in a row over 110 degrees. It's like 118 there right now. Every mile I can feel it start to get hotter and hotter and I'm definitely getting warmer and warmer second by second. So then I don't want dehydration to be a problem so I'm really trying to chug as much water as possible. But it's definitely starting to get like a little sauna out here. Oh, by the way, this Taco Bell trip officially marks the 12 hour mark. It might, this might even take more than 24 hours. At this point, not only is the heat slowly starting to build up, leading up to the extreme heat warning in Phoenix, but even though I'm going slower than I expected, I'm hoping that I can make it into Phoenix early in the morning so it's not that hot. I'm sorting like an absolute pig, but anyway, we got some Powerade. We have 88 miles to go to the next spot. The next stop is Austin, Nevada, which is about 100 miles away. It's uh, it's now 7-11 hey, at night, so sunset's gonna be here in about half an hour, so this is when, you know, things start to get a little bit more dangerous. I'm not gonna put anybody in danger, but I am gonna absolutely push my limits to finish up this ride in 24 hours. Every time I stop at one of these little mini marts now, I'm loading up on Gatorade, water, Celsius, caffeine, whatever I need because at some point in the middle of the night, all these places are gonna be closed, so I can't go inside. But I wanna have it all in here in this backpack, even though it's adding weight to it. All right, let's head off to the next destination, Austin. This was the most disgusting part of the ride. It's hard to see, but there's like a million crickets on this road and they're all splashing and gooing and it, ugh, God, it's so gross. Not only that, it's kind of making me lose traction, but it's officially sunset time and now we're getting to the night ride portion of this video. It's 8.30, we just entered the smallest little town. 100 miles away from everything. <laughs> just look at how gross this helmet has gotten. Oh my God, like what was that that I hit right there? Just finished the 88 mile drive here. Here's our current situation. It's 9 p.m. I'm gonna get to my next destination at 10.40. I'm barely gonna have like 20 minutes to get food. And from there, I think I get, hey, the next stop is Vegas. We still have a long, very long distance to go, like 600 miles before we get home. 600 miles, a mile a minute. Oh my God, maybe a little bit more than a mile a minute. You know, I'm gonna get there literally at like 6 a.m. So we're pushing the 24 hour mark. <laughs> Went past it, really. The guy in here that was just working just told me, hey, you gotta be careful as you're driving because there's a lot of deer. <laughs> And the deer and antelope like to come out and they just, just literally just jump across the road. So do everything you can to like avoid them. Watch out, be careful. If you see crickets on the road, which I did, it's like, it makes the road like ice, super slippery. Gotta be careful. We're actually getting to the dangerous part of the drive. So this is when I'm really putting my rider test to skills. My rider skills to the test. <laughs> it's time to move on to the next portion of the drive. Two hours, 120 miles. Oh, and my watch officially died and no way to charge my phone. So I'm just being as conservative as possible with the battery. I've gone through my three MagSafe battery packs. I'm using the last, the third one right now and it's gotta last me the rest of the ride. So yeah, let's keep going. At this point, I'm officially hitting the most difficult part of the ride. Not only because it's pitch black outside with absolutely no street lights, things are starting to go wrong. Exhibit A, I took a wrong turn and I had to pull over in the middle of the road just to figure out where I was. Not only does my lower back hurt, but now my knees are really starting to kill me. Made it to Sonoma. I just have a slight concern. I keep smelling this burning 
It smells like burning. And so I'm looking at this motorcycle. I'm like, is it the motorcycle burning? Or is it all the crickets that I ran over that are now stuck on the muffler that are burning and smell gross? Because it smells really bad 150 miles ago, but it smells less bad now, but it still smells burnt. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't tell if it's the burnt crickets that I ran over or if there's something wrong with my engine right now. You would not believe the amount of anxiety I have right now being stuck in the middle of nowhere, hoping to God my engine isn't burning up. Look at all those burnt crickets. Oil's a bit dirty, but it's still fine. In there though, that looks a little bit goopy. I decided to take the risk of it being the crickets and went on the drive anyway. And this is when I almost died. But first, I have to tell you about my little donkey friend. Check this out. Oh, is that a donkey? Where's Shrek? Whoa. Oh my god. Wait, why is that a donkey? By itself, no owner? No, it's, this is the wild. It's just eating what? some Popeyes. That is so cool. Look how cool his eyes are. It's like he's wearing a little mask. He looks like he needs to come home. I love him. Same, same. But this is gonna take so much longer than 24 hours. It says, if I were to drive to my house right now, nonstop, it says I would get there at 8.30 in the morning right now. That is, that is way, that's more than 24 hours. I almost died on the way here. I was following the semi truck and he was going at a good speed. And so like, intuitively I was like, you know what? I don't really, I don't wanna pass him. I followed this guy for like 30 miles. Right before we got into this town, there was deer crossing the road in front of the semi truck. He had to swerve into the other lane and he almost got in the accident with the deer flipped over the semi truck or trailer. I had to slow down, but long story short, we survived. Energy wise, I'm still good. I've had a couple of Red Bulls. I feel fully alert, wide awake. As long as I can keep doing this safely, I'm gonna keep doing it. Keep on riding. My lower back was hurting really, really bad. So I loosened up my backpack like crazy. Now all the weight, is resting on the back seat. So I found a way to alleviate some of my lower back pain, but it was still honestly just terrible the whole way through. And then my anxiety from almost dying went away, so I got really tired. Okay, yeah, I drove like 30 minutes and got really tired. So here's the current setup. That's gonna be my pillow. I'm gonna lay right here. Truck stop. Area 51 Alien Center. I'm gonna start drinking a Red Bull and just chill out here until I'm back and ready to rumble. Right here, I'm just telling you how I'm waiting for the sun to start coming up again because it's pitch black outside and the darkness is also making me tired and I just don't wanna actually die. Wow, this is actually really nice because I haven't gotten to look up at the stars yet. What a wild adventure this is, huh? The best part about laying down here right now is just feeling the relief in my knees. They were hurting so bad before I took off again onto the next leg of my ride. You know how weird it is to watch the sun rise yesterday and then watch it set and then re-rise again? Just got gas and the sun is rising. As soon as the sun rises in 10 minutes, it will officially be 24 hours. 24 hours of riding this bad boy. I was still five hours to go. If it's not obvious from my voice, I'm in pain and I'm not even having fun anymore. And now I'm driving through Las Vegas, Nevada, and these people are driving like maniacs at 6 a.m. This is kind of blowing my mind. Here we are parked again at McDonald's for breakfast because it's six in the morning again. So let's eat breakfast again, even though it feels like all one continuous day. All right, food is done. We're on the home stretch. Let's finish this up. I don't have anything to say. I'm just ready to get this over with. At this point of the ride, I'm so exhausted. I drove by the Hoover Dam. You have to pass the Hoover Dam when you're going from Vegas to Phoenix. And I didn't even stop. I've always wanted to see the Hoover Dam and I just drove past it. I was just in pain. I was, my knees were hurting. My lower back was just on fire. So I just drove away and I kind of regret it right now. All right, update, we're on the home stretch here. Okay, my, my, I'm almost getting a headache from these earplugs because there's just pressure against my ear the whole time. My knees are the biggest pain point, oh my gosh. Honestly, my knees hurt more than the time that I ran a marathon. Right there, they're just tucked. Oh man, so painful. That's why I keep getting up to walk around. We've officially crossed into Arizona. There are three hours, two minutes left until I get to my house. Oh, saying that brings, makes me feel so happy. Okay, next stop is 120 miles away. I'm gonna stop either two more times 
or three more times, I'm done. Look at this back tire from all the crickets that I ran over and then they dried up and just made it look like an icky gooey mess. Other than that though, this baby's ready to ride. I honestly wasn't even having fun anymore. This started to like completely suck. As terrible as this ride has become, it's about to get to the worst part of it all. At the time of recording this video, Arizona is in an excessive heat warning. I underestimated the heat. I thought it was kind of a joke. This heat is no joke. We've entered the excess, excessive heat zone. Let me tell you, it is excessively hot outside. And in this helmet, oh my goodness. It might be 9 a.m., but it is ridiculously hot outside right now. It's so hot out here. I think it's like 115 right now. With two hours left in the middle of nowhere, literally passing by nothing Arizona, I'm starting to get concerned. I'm not gonna be able to face this heat. To make it worse, the UV index is climbing and now I'm starting to get sunburns on my arms and shoulders. It's so hot, I'm burning up. The UV index is like 12 Then I feel the burn. Oh, that's so bad, look at that. Oh, that's so bad. Oh no, that's terrible. Ow. Even my nipples hurt just from I gotta be honest with you. At this part of the ride, it was genuinely too hot outside. It felt like a literal sauna. It was so hot outside, my motorcycle engine felt colder than the outside air. I got genuinely concerned that if the bike wasn't gonna overheat, I was. I filled up on gas one last time and I had an hour and a half left and I rode through the desert heat like it was my last moment on earth. I felt like I was melting. The sunburn on my arms started to sting in pain. It got to the point where even my breath was shallow because it was just so hot outside. My body wasn't functioning properly. I don't know if it was dehydration or heat exhaustion or what it was, but my body started to tingle. I felt lightheaded, delirious, and I knew I was in trouble if I didn't make it home. But with only 10 minutes to go until getting to my house, I was sitting there in that insanely hot heat and I had no option but to pull myself together, dig deep and push through and make it all the way home as quickly as possible before my body completely shut down. So after riding over 30 hours on this motorcycle, I finally made it home. I am like tingling. I feel like I got home. I'm like tingling, I feel like. I don't know if I got like heat rush and my chest is swollen from the bee that stung me, but I made it. It was like 32 hours. Now I need to like relax and recover because I'm, I don't know why I'm tingling. <laughs> I don't know. That's it. I wish I had a better outro, but like something crazy is going on. Feel free to subscribe if you like the video. Bye. Oh yeah, heads up YouTube. Everything was filmed safely and responsibly and there's no reason to demonetize anything because it was professionally paneled very well to the maximum of all safety capabilities. Mm-hmm.